Hi, everybody. Good morning. My name is Dora Drexler. I'm the director of the Research Institute of Organic Agriculture in Hungary. And I'm really glad to be the moderator of today's uh, session on packaging and organic. Uh, the subtitle is less is more. So it's an interesting topic, an interesting debate and a special welcome to everybody who is listening in person in Warsaw. Uh, I'm imagining you now in front of me. Uh, I hope everybody uh, will enjoy it online and uh, uh, in person in the upcoming 50 minutes. We will uh, be discussing uh, about an interesting topic uh, which is not yet regulated in the organic <laughs> regulations. Uh, however, it uh, does not really comply when we see organic products uh, covered in plastic. So something is there uh, which we need to do about it. So we will have four speakers who I will introduce uh, one by one. Uh, everybody will have a seven minute intervention and I thank everyone in advance uh, keeping, for keeping the time. So we will hear Sarah Comson, Valentina Pizzi, Steve Iserman and Johanna Stumpner. And uh, we will have after the interventions, uh, question and answer sessions, where I encourage everybody uh, to take part actively online and on the spot in beautiful Warsaw. So if you hear any uh, interesting sounds, that's because of her. She's my little baby online now. and. Uh, I'm really glad and thankful that I can take part and moderate this session, even though I'm at home <laughs> with her. So I won't take up more time from the session and I would like to um, introduce Sarah Compson as our first speaker. Sarah works at Soil Association and she's also chair of the IFAM uh, interest group on organic process uh, of organic processors and traders. And she will be talking about a new uh, uh, private standard developed by Soil Association for packaging. So it's an interesting issue. And Sarah, you're the, the floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dora. So yes, as Dora said, I'm from the Soil Association. And today I want to explain a bit about how we approach the topic of packaging and also share some of the areas of tension and challenge we found there and um, give a little insight into what our um, vision for the sector and vision for organic packaging is. So for those of you who've not heard of the Soil Association before, we're a UK based charity that makes a connection between climate, nature and health and our founder Lady Eve Balfour developed some of the world's first organic standards and today we continue to have organic standards that go above and beyond regulation for the greater fulfilment of organic principles. And we have SA, uh, Soil Association Certification who carry out certification to the Soil Association Higher Standards. Um, and I just want to kick this session off with some quick facts and figures from a survey that Soil Association Certification carried out in relation to fresh produce packing. Um, and so over, and it's, it's fast, so there's quite a lot in the survey, but the most um, fascinating, some fascinating stats from it over half, um, 55% of shoppers expect organic fresh produce packaging to have a lower or no environmental impact. The survey also found that two out of five expect organic products to be packaged in materials that are more environmentally friendly than their non-organic alternatives. Non-recyclable packaging was the biggest cause of concern for almost half of those surveyed, and that was followed by 42% who were concerned about excess packaging and 37% who were concerned about plastic packaging. Now, non-recycled plastic was the least preferred packaging option, probably not a huge surprise. Um, and the biggest barrier considered to purchasing organic fresh, fresh produce was 50% um, saying they wouldn't buy a product packed in non-recycled plastic compared to just 11% who would be put off if the plastic was recycled. So, I just wanted to start with that as a bit of a context to the um, consumer mindset around um, and this was specifically with um, fresh produce packing in mind, but I think it's quite an interesting tell and um, some of you might be surprised by some of those figures and 
some will think they're, they're pretty obvious, but uh, yeah, so I thought I'd kick off with that and then share a bit about um, the Soil Association's approach to packaging. And I'll start with a bit of background. So as Dora said, we developed some of the world's first organic standards for packaging about 10 years ago. And we also produced a guidance document alongside it to really help companies find ways to reduce waste and increase reusable and recycled materials. Now, 10 years on, our standards um, have requirements for packaging still, and they mainly relate to eliminating or reducing ha harmful substances in packaging. So uh, things like phthalates, PVC, BPA, and GM ingredients. Now, we're not the only organic standard setter to include requirements for packaging. And within the leading organic alliance of European standard setters, we have a packaging working group that includes Crave, Bio Swiss, Naturland, Eco Kermark, and they all have standards for packaging um, in one way or another. And we work together to really try and share some of these challenges um, that we come across in implementing packaging standards and to keep each other informed about the fast moving developments that are happening in the kind of sustainable packaging sector. So I wanted to share some of the challenges with you because I think that's where um, some of the most interesting learnings can be found. The first thing is kind of obvious, but it's really hard to use standards to drive change when they're not a um, statutory requirement of regulation. And the organic market, as we know, is a small percentage of the total food market. And uh, so we're going to need to engage with the broader food industry in order to drive change, um, which is straightforward sometimes when the rest of the market has an interest in these topics. So we're thinking about something like BPA, where uh, the elimination phase out of BPA happened relatively quickly because there was kind of a common interest in doing that. Well, one of the main challenges we've really found is that there is a huge risk of um, swapping out one problem for another. So um, everyone knows that there's been a huge spotlight on plastic and the, the um, and the elimination of plastic is this kind of like almost demonized material. Um, and many companies rightly wish to switch to more sustainable alternatives but ones that have quite similar properties. They look the same, they have the same function. And biodegradable PLA packaging is one of the most popular um, when it comes to an alternative to conventional plastic. But the challenge with biodegradable packaging is it often comes from genetically modified feedstock. So um, maize is um, often from GM maize grown in the States. Now, GM maize has been linked to increased herbicide use, biodiversity decline, pollution of waterways and lots of other farm level and human health impacts that are most certainly within the sphere of concern for organic. Now, consumers don't necessarily understand about these issues, so it can be hard for companies to then stay consistent with organic values by rejecting GM packaging um, whilst also keeping their customers. And often the alternatives to the, um, so you can get non-GM PLA, but often it's a lot more expensive and doesn't necessarily have the same functionality as the GM PLA. So it's a real dilemma and a real trade-off. So as I said, like packaging has an important role to play. Um, it's often necessary or unavoidable, but there is loads of room for innovation. And um, we need to have a mindful approach that reflects organic principles still and fulfills consumer expectations. Um, now standards can really help here because they can set boundaries for what you can and can't do. And we found that it's good to have um, the substances on our standards that are eliminated in organic packaging. It's a great start. Um, but standards alone aren't enough. They need to be accompanied by a much more rounded approach to innovation. And that covers everything from product design to how products are transported, how they're marketed. Uh, you need to fill a picture to really address the packaging topic properly. So what we'd really like to see is, um, first of all, that all organic businesses are concerned about packaging. I think today most of them are, but um, we really need to see that um, writ large. Um, and also companies should take a deep dive into their packaging, not just um, make simple swaps. We nearly really need to commit to innovative approaches to tackling the challenges and be aware of some of the trade-offs like the one with GM that I just mentioned. And um, innovation can relate to materials and supply chains. Um, 
and also one of the great things to do is learn from others there's so much information and advice out there and i'm lucky to be going first today because i think we're going to hear from some great examples uh, with the other speakers um just one i came across yesterday is um riverford who are a box skiing company in the uk they've done so much work on their um addressing their packaging and it's just worth looking at uh, how others have operated in this area. And in fact, if anyone can think of um, really great examples of companies that have innovated, maybe pop them in the chat so that others can look too. So just to finish then, it, yes, it's vital that the organic sector considers packaging because consumers expect it, but ultimately because it's the right thing to do as part of a holistic approach to organic products. That's it from me. Back to you, Dora. Thank you very much, Sarah. That was a really good introduction to our session and uh, uh, showed a lot of uh, facets which we don't really usually think of even, like using GM crops for uh, sustainable packaging. So uh, I will just introduce now one of the examples uh, which we are going to hear about. Valentina Pizzi is here with us and she works at Pizzi Osvaldo and uh, Valentina, tell us where you are speaking from, uh, because I, our session is all online. I forgot to ask Sarah, but uh, I will ask you, where are you talking from now? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So uh, I'm, I'm Italian and I speak from Milan, where the office is, uh, is placed. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I prepare a few slides just because of some image can help uh, uh, the discussion, if you if you can uh, send on the screen. Um, yes, and I uh, just wanted to say thank you, Valentina, that uh, you are uh, part of a family company in Italy, yes. uh, involved in organic uh, food production and, of course, packaging. And what we will hear about is how you deal with alternatives to plastic. So that's, uh, again, something uh, very interesting as an example. So the floor is yours. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Dora. Um, yes, so th this is a, a, a different point of view. The, the company that I work for is the company that my grandfather, Osvaldo, founded, uh, I, I believe 50, 60 years ago. So, And we are basically working in the, into the Italian market. So uh, that's the point uh, that we are going to see. But we work, uh, just a second, because of course I have the challenge to move the slide. Okay, let's see. Okay, so a little bit of, um, of the introduction from my side. Um, one second, I promise. Okay. So um, my, since the very beginning of organic production in Europe uh, in 1990, uh, uh, Pizzi Osvaldo has followed the entire process of organic fruit and vegetables agribusiness uh, in Italy, from the organic farms to the supermarket shelves. So our main customer are the uh, supermarkets, the stores uh, in, in Italy. Uh, we, we follow the, the process between the, the growers to the supplier. Okay, so. And uh, the, the main goal of our company is only organic, and only fresh and, uh, and uh, vegetables, fresh and fruits and vegetables. And uh, um, we work to have a full assortment uh, to be used. And, and as we used to say, uh, we manage from A of apricot to Z of zucchini most of the time. So the, 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 the aim is 12, 12 months uh, production over the year. So I need to challenge. Uh, this is what we do on daily basis. We track the course of the production, authenticity, compliance of the organic production. We help and encourage uh, producers to grow and develop their business in the appropriate way. Uh, and of course, an important piece of our goal, goal our work is maintaining a good standard in agriculture, in particular in Italy. 
And uh, yes, there is one other important piece that is the packaging uh, for which uh, we have the challenge be because the working on organic was one of the most important questions a couple of years ago. So how we can manage the packaging piece uh, knowing that we are selling and producing and working with an, in an organic world. So uh, what about the sustainability point? So um, there are many questions at that point, and uh, um, of course our our um, our customer as well was uh, looking to the best solution. So just um, I don't want to drive in an Italian organic uh, market conversation. I, I just need a context to explain uh, what uh, what we choose. So in Italy, we have uh, a, 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 a very good uh, percentage of, uh, of what is the uh, utilized agriculture area that is organic. But the market, the, the sales is just 4%. It's growing, but it's still there is a huge potential. So what about this uh, sales piece? 47% almost is a fresh fruit and vegetables. So in the organic market, fruit and vegetables is an important piece. And 80% of what we sell and what the people buy in Italy are distributor of the, of the organic product are distributed in general stores. So not full organic stores. These are just a, a, still a little pieces. So for that reason, package is not an option. So we need, because of the safety of the product, because of the track, tracking of the product, because of the uh, sales process, we need, uh, I mean, our customer wants to have the package. So that's the reason package is not an option. Okay. So uh, then we, 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 that there was many, many options that we can choose because there are many company and many, many solutions on the on, on possible. Of course, the main uh, oil, boy, um, aim is avoid plastic. This is the number one the need. And what we can do when we want to avoid plastic. So there are nice options here in the picture, uh, like uh, re reusable bag, uh, newspaper cartoon, leaf, uh, paper bottles. So many of them that are not usable for um, fresh fruit and vegetables. And there are a little bit more quote uh, percentage of plastic in them. There is a wonderful, uh, beautiful and promising opportunity that is the natural branding you can see here on the bottom. So laser, um, laser brand products. But for us, uh, this is not, um, this is not can be used because we have also the need of putting the the uh, the code to the product and this is not yet possible to this product so then there is an option of bi biodegradable biodegradable material um, and other what we choose was the biocompostable material so compostable material to pack our product um, the the reason, main reason, and of course this was driven by our customer, um, is because uh, the compostable material uh, breaks down into compostable, they, com they compose into their environment. And so there are especially for organic uh, that breaks down. So at the end, these are the best uh, solution because if everything goes in the right in the appropriate way, uh, we don't put any toxic residue, um, but it's everything that is, can be used as a compostable material. So, um, so that's the reason why, um, just a second, I cannot, okay. Uh, cost compostable product are the answer. Uh, we made an innovative material. No, we, we, we buy innovative materials from the company that are uh, really used to this. Um, and so that is uh, the situation so far. They have also a certification to certify that are compostable. And these are the main uh, products there. And uh, in uh, 2019, in our company, uh, we launched for the first time biocompostable material and incentivized biocompostable wrap, so the, the, the film used uh, in alternative to plastic material to pack our product, to pack our um, organic product. So basically the transition was 
started from plastic uh, panet and and, um, and material to recyclable and fully compostable paper um, material. All of the, the, the this the again the 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 objective was that all the package with inside the fruit and vegetables can be um, waste can be put with the compost with the compostable fruit and vegetables. So everything, every little pieces go to the uh, to the compost compost, right? Okay. The conversion process was uh, not so easy because we started um, in advance. So basically, together with the producer of the of the machine to pack the product, uh, they created the, the good solution and to, to have a stretch film that was the, the most challenge piece. Uh, based but with no plastic components and, uh, and used uh, with our um, paper tray. So these are the different uh, passage. So there are some things that need to be fixed, like the speed of the production, the transparency, the breathability, and the cost of the product. So it took two, three years to develop the final material. And, uh, and also for the little um, net bag. As mentioned before, PLA was already on the market, but this is not uh, the perfect option. So we have few products that needs to be packaged with PLA, but the rest is always compostable um, wrap on compostable paper tray and net bag. Um, the investment was, uh, I would say, important uh, because we spent time. We we invest in uh, buying a new machine, and uh, of course, uh, the the cost of the material is uh, very high, but uh, was still a, a good opportunity to to make the change because we we want to to do something different. We need to do something different. So. Um, this is the points where we are at the moment. Of course, we are increasing our our working time, but still, nothing is working better than plastic. You can imagine that. So, just to conclude, uh, of course, less is more. Uh, we need. We decided to change our attitude. The learning curve was uh, shorter than other kind of uh, of uh, situation. What we see and what we have as a feedback from our customer that the response was huge. So everyone that is a buyer of organic product uh, see, saw the difference. And so th that was the very good uh, response. And of course, we believe in the project and we are committed to progress, to, to, to increase, to, being, uh, to do more and more in this direction. The investment in time of... Um, of um, of the time and resource was uh, huge. Uh, there is, uh, of course, an incremental cost, but as I said, we start an, an, the organic business because we want to have, uh, to preserve our planet. So we, we believe in this choice. And so we are going to do the same also in the future. Okay. So of course, this is all in the direction of the sustainability and uh, I mean, there are a lot of things more, but uh, if you want, you can uh, show, look at them during into the present into the website if you want. Thanks. Thank you very much, Valentina. And uh, it's uh, really inspiring always to see real life ex uh, experiences and successful transitions. So thank you for showing uh, this example to us from Italy. And uh, to keep the time, I'm going to introduce, uh, without any ado, Steve Isaman from uh, the Netherlands. And uh, he will be talking about uh, Eco Plaza. Again, a very practical and good example on a, a shop, uh, I guess also a retail chain in a way, uh, without any plastic. So, uh, Steve, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, many thanks. Um... In the questions where I am, I'm in uh, the Netherlands. I'm uh, um, 
uh, in Den Bosch. Actually, I'm in a place where uh, uh, I'm trying to share my screen. In the meantime, I cannot do two things at once. I, I'm in a place where we uh, it's like a union that represents uh, farmers, and we are talking about carbon farming, another very interesting topic. But now I'm here to talk about uh, um, uh, plastic. So I share here uh, my presentation to uh, to tell a bit about our journey and what we did uh, on plastic and um, well. Uh, to tell first a bit about our company. We're, the mother company is called Udea. So we are a wholesaler in the Netherlands that are um, uh, selling mainly to organic shops. We have 10,000 products uh, that we sell to uh, uh, organic shops, uh, uh, restaurants, uh, other situations. But we also sell uh, in other countries. We sell on over 20 uh, different kind of countries, mainly ice cream, but also other brands. And we are in the Netherlands, especially mainly known for our uh, uh, organic supermarket chain that is called Ecoplaza. <clears throat> and uh, at the moment we have uh, 85 stores in the Netherlands and we just opened uh, two stores also in Belgium <clears throat> with the hope to open many more in the, in the future. Um, we would try to be to a consumer more than just a supermarket alone. So we try to give them uh, several options. We also have a web shop which we can deliver uh, at your home, but also uh, uh, to uh, pick it up at the stores. Uh, we help uh, you with meals, even if it's uh, ready to eat, but also uh, to uh, to give like a substitute that is uh, known as uh, what's the most, most known brand, I think is HelloFresh. So we have an organic substitute for that. And we help you with an app, with information, with to be inspired. So uh, to make you uh, really understand uh, uh, about that. Um, so uh, we are already a company uh, active for 30 years, starting as uh, I think one of the pioneers in organic. So our company is always focused on the, the known principles of uh, organic uh, in uh, yeah, uh, defined also by iPhone. So here you can uh, see them. Um, but if you see in the, the organic legislation, it's mainly a focus on the part of ecology and not so much on all the other aspects. But as a company, we try to keep all these several aspects into detail and try to explain to our consumer that this is who we are and that this is the, the, the values that we work on. Um, we do it via very several kind of campaigns, which I give here a broad uh, overview in. It can be about health, like telling people to eat less sugar, but also about biodiversity, where we tell about the importance of the bees, but also the, the, the danger of uh, using uh, chemicals in, the, in your food, uh, uh, way of consumption. And also uh, we did a, a, a huge campaign about palm oil and if you use palm oil, that you use the right palm oil, but also that it's good to not use too much of it, and that it's also good to to have several kind of oils. Uh, but another huge campaign that we did is uh, about plastic. We did several kinds, and we have a cooperation with the Plastic Soup Foundation, an organization in the Netherlands that um, uh, informs consumers about the problems that is causing of the Plastic Soup Foundation. And via this organization, we did. Uh, already very uh, many uh, campaigns which are a bit smaller and more local uh, and uh, we donate also many money via our refund system so people can bring back packaging to their to the stores and instead of getting back their money they can also decide to uh, to 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 donate this to the plastic soup foundation and via the plastic soup foundation we came also in contact with another organization that is a uh, uk based um, and that's called A Plastic Planet. And they started a big campaign already in the UK telling, okay, uh, why is there not a plastic-free aisle? In, a, in an age where you can choose with your groceries to buy gluten-free, fat-free, anything free, why can I not make the, discussion, uh, the, the decision for plastic-free? I want a plastic-free aisle. Uh, they contacted us after contacting many other retailers who did not want to participate with them. And we thought it was a very good idea. So uh, we came up uh, with a cooperation and we started to open a plastic-free supermarket, which I want to uh, like to share, to show a bit how it's uh, looking. Three, two, one, 
So you also see a bit of an overview uh, of how it was looking. We really tried to explain what we were doing and which kind of materials we used as a substitute for plastic. Uh, and it became a huge hit. We were uh, worldwide news uh, from all the big newspapers uh, uh, all over the world and uh, many, many interviews we had. And uh, until this day, we have uh, still uh, questions about what we did there and how to explain what our vision is. Uh, it was only a, a, a pop-up store from the beginning. Uh, but we translated it into all our stores. So what you can see is that we are informing now our consumers about the the, the, cho the choice that they can make in shopping plastic-free within all our supermarkets uh, uh, of Ecoplaza. Uh, and we also do it with our communication. This is an example of our uh, um, uh, discount folder that we share with our consumers. Um, and maybe it's good also to highlight why we are doing this, uh, because we think that recycling is a good substitute for uh, as long as you're using plastic but we don't think it's the end solution if you want to solve the plastic problem mainly because plastic leakage happens in many phases we mainly know the end of life phase uh, or the, the user phase where people just litter it in the environment uh, but also in the production phase it can already happen where producers already spill uh, plastic and it comes into the environment there's many examples also for that the only solution is that we need to break free from plastic. So we believe in many options in that. It can be packaging free, where you just bring as a consumer your own packaging. But if you want to have convenience, it's also good to use different kind of materials. And there's many materials that we know, glass, paper, metals. They are useful uh, products where you uh, need almost to know plastic. And we want to develop it into a fully plastic free uh, Example, so the lid that the contains now still plastic needs to become plastic free as well. But in general, this is perfect alternative to plastic. But we also uh, uh, check new materials. So the compostable film we are also using. Uh, the example of Sara that it also is a product that you really need to focus on based on quality, but also based on the source of where it's from. Uh, but we make decisions in certain products that we pack inside this uh, uh, film. Um, but we think we are not uh, there yet because compostable film, uh, we see it as a, a, a well way of thinking and with fruits and, fruit and vegetables, it fits the best because there you can see, okay, um, it will compost together if you litter, if you waste it in the, in the right way. But at the end, we believe it's not yet a solution for the plastic soup, the, the materials that are uh, offered now, uh, but also it is not, uh, an, it has not enough applications and it is a very expensive and a scare raw material. So, um, and the problem in the Netherlands also is that we do not have uh, a lot of acceptance in waste facilities. So what is the goal? We want uh, fully bio-based materials that come from a proven sustainable source, rather organic, but also maybe like the rest products. So not the crop that you eat, but the, 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 the products, the pieces of the plant that you do not eat. It must be recyclable, preferably in the form of this, but if it's not, then it's always compostable and that the right uh, way, way of waste management. We believe there is still a lot of innovation needed and we cannot do that alone. And that is why we want to always step up on the stage to ask other companies, please help us work with us together and let's try to, uh, to innovate together. So if you have options or you want to participate with us, please contact me. Um, I would say I'm ready for change and I hope you are too. Many thanks, Ethan, for this inspiring presentation and for the initiative, again, uh, one that uh, is a forerunner, I think. And uh, without any ado, now I would like to introduce our uh, last speaker, last but not least, Johanna Stumpner. 
She works at the Association of Organic Food uh, Producers in Germany. I think you're, where are you speaking from, Joanna? Yes. Hello, Dora. Hello, everyone. I am sitting in Fulda in Germany, pretty much in the middle of the country. Okay, thank you. So you're going to talk about uh, a project, uh, AOL, the, the Food uh, Producers Association is taking part. And uh, you are also involved as a member in IFOAM's interest group of organic processors and traders. So we look forward to your presentation. The floor is yours, Jana. Thank you, Dora. Yes, I would like to present to you a tool that we have um, developed in the past years. As Dora just said, I'm from the Association of Organic Food Processes based in Germany. You have already met my colleague Alexander Beck in this session before this on the organic regulation. And another topic apart from the regulation that has for quite some time already been part of our association and of our members discussions is packaging we've had a working group for many many years on packaging questions and um, started a few years back a um, project which i would like to show to you now just a second we'll share the screen okay here you go and this is a project which, which was funded publicly funded by money of our uh, ministry of food and farming because um, as you have just heard from all the speakers before me um, the yeah, packaging topic the plastic topic the um, agroplastic or biodegradable um, plastics topic has become bigger and bigger and um, there is a program which we participated in saying we would like to yeah, develop a tool helping food companies to yeah to to get more information on the bioplastics which are on the market already to help them decide which alternative would be best for the product they have and just to yeah, offer some additional information so the tool is called bio kunststoff tool which of course is uh, a German word, so Biokunststoff is bioplastics. Um, you will see the website link on the right side. Um, the website is available in German and in English. We are still in the process of translating everything to English. So for the moment, you will find most of the information in English, but not everything yet. I will show you in the um, process of my presentation. So I hope you um, are kind <laughs> with us that we are not that quick in. Um, in, yeah, in, in translations. So um, that's how the website looks like. So you will see some news on the left side. You will see general information on the topic of um, bioplastics or packaging uh, questions in general. We have uh, materials information. We have some practical examples. We have a list of manufacturers, a manual, and you, of course, see who the people are behind this tool and um, where to contact us. So first of all, of course, the question is why does this bioplastics tool exist? Um, as I said, um, we were part of a project which was called Options for Action for the Use of Sustainable Bio-Based Plastics as Packaging for Food, Assistance with Decision Making via an Internet Portal, which was funded by our uh, ministry. And it was very successful and therefore updated in a follow-up project um, to update all the information. And the uh, tool provides information on the six most important material groups currently available on the market. And the information relates to the four criteria, which we already know also from the organic um, context, ecology, social aspects, safety, technology, and quality. We have five material groups, which are described and evaluated based on sub-criteria, such as, for example, land use, life cycle assessment, social standards, and migration. Um, you can also compare these material groups which, uh, with, with each other, so that's quite useful. And we have a checklist, which is an Excel document that you can download from the website. For the moment, only available in German, but uh, hopefully soon at some point also in English. So the materials you can look at and compare are BioPE, PP, PET, cellulose, polyactyl, so PLA and starch components. And there are some general informations about the materials. And the um, website is yeah, spelled like this. I have just chosen BioPE as ex example. So you will find some general information on the material itself, on the recyclability and the prices. You have several downloads you can make. So a checklist for you as, as food processor. 
a packaging guide and um, the symbol legend. So it's uh, the usual red, yellow, and green is then for the criteria we'll look at in a second. Um, then you have for every material, some materials manufacturer. So a list of uh, who process or who manufactures them, where you could get them. Um, the fields of application, for example, the properties of the material, et cetera. And then we have, uh, as I said in the beginning, the sustainability criteria followed. So for ecology, then land use, environmental compatibility, um, certification, genetic engineering. So the topic that Sarah already spoke about in the beginning, disposal, life cycle assessment, percentage of bio-based materials for social compatibility, social standards and cultivation, social standards and processing, etc. And you always see with the um, symbols, so if it is green or if it is yellow or red, um, how, how much information and how scientifically, scientifically based and proven the information is that you see on the website. Then we have the general information, um, which is very interesting. We have some general information on an environmental pollution caused by old production, um, some comparison of fossil versus bio-based um, for PE, and then two things that, which are very interesting, but still sadly only in German, which is our um, theme issue, um, very interesting, and some arguments for food processes concerning packaging topics. And I can definitely recommend you this part, um, which is environmental pollution caused by oil production. It's very, very interesting. It is based on a very um, extensive report from Greenpeace, uh, already from 2016, but still very interesting. Um, where you see this world map and you can click on the um, several uh, spots and get some more information on how yeah, the, um, the, the, oil production and the um, environmental pollution, which it is causing at that spot um, is, uh, is the, the current situation there. This is the team issue I just mentioned. Um, it is was also um, developed or written, I'd say, in the project context. It's on bioplastic uh, with many articles from experts on the topic and also experience reports from companies. It is for the moment only available as a PDF document and only in German language as our association um, is a German based and German speaking association. But for those of you who do speak German or who can at least a little bit understand it, um, feel free to check it out because it's really interesting. And then we have practical examples for coffee, for snacks, for baking products, for fresh products and for meat, so five ones. This is also one of the parts, as sorry as I am, which are only available in German form at the moment, but we will hopefully um, be able to translate it soon, um, where you can see always on the left side, the like traditional packaging solution on the right side, the bio-based packaging solution. And if there are differences, if yes, um, where they are, et cetera. And the list of manufacturers uh, you'll find also on the Website, we offer a list of manufacturers of bioplastics, which we know for the moment. I am pretty sure that there are maybe some people here today who um, are also manufacturers of bioplastics, but are not listed there yet. So if this is uh, the case, please feel free to contact us so that we can add you to the list. Or if you know of companies, if you are maybe a food processor yourself and use packaging by some company or by a manufacturer that is not listed there, please also feel free to contact us. We are always happy to make the list longer. And if you need any more info on the website, on the tool, on the project, or anything concerned with it, feel free to contact us. Um, our packaging expert is my colleague, Brunhard Kehl, here on the left side, um, who is not able to join us today. Um, otherwise, you can also contact me, and um, I will discuss it with him or forward him the information. So that's from my side, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Johanna. So uh, it was great that the two very good examples were framed by uh, more help on the way. So everybody can see as a company that if they embark on the road of exchanging uh, plastic or uh, anyway in using sustainable packaging, there is a lot of know-how and knowledge out there. So feel free to reach out to our presenters. And uh, with that, I thank all the four of the 
uh, team who uh, takes part in our panel today, our presenters, and uh, I hope we have a lot of uh, interactive uh, opportunities in the in the time which is not too much unfortunately left until uh, 1150 uh, so uh, one question was actually posted uh, to Stephen uh, it says that it's an interesting and inspiring presentation which you gave uh, is the way of packaging without plastic also possible in standard supermarkets where organic food is presented beside non-organic food and should be distinguished from it so thanks if you can answer shortly. Um, well, what I could say about it is that indeed for general supermarkets, it becomes even more mandatory to start packaging their uh, fruits and vegetable, at least one of the two. And most of the time organic is the one that they choose to pack to distinguish the difference between uh, organic and not organic products. So if you're going to pack your product, it would be good to find the most sustainable way. And um, but yeah, so also for supermarkets, it makes a lot of sense. Also, consumer, especially in the Netherlands, what I know is consumer uh, consumers do not expect packaging around organic products in fruits and vegetables. So it feels like a bad thing if they are packed. But if you can show that you have thought of the packaging and that you um, pack it in the most sustainable way, um, yeah, that would be very good. So and there's many plastic-free options to to pack your uh, your your fruits and vegetables. So uh, uh, yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. I would uh, say there's many options. Thank you very much, Stephen. Well, uh, you have to let us know if there are any questions live in Warsaw. Otherwise, I'm just going to ask another one. Um, I, I think many consumers really think that plastic cannot be organic. Uh, and that, that, that means also that their uh, kind of perception of compostable plastic is also uh, negative. So uh, could you just comment uh, on this, Johanna? I know you discussed it uh, with AOL a lot, that uh, should organic uh, think about using uh, agroplastics at all? Yes, we have actually discussed this question quite a lot. Um, Sarah, said, I think it was Sarah saying it in her introduction that we have like this demonization of plastics in general. And of course, many consumers don't really get organic food and plastics together. And um, also if we look like from the food processing and organic regulation uh, point of view, then we would say, of course, uh, a plastic cannot be organic or bio or eco or in any case, but still many of the organic businesses and all of our members, because it's one of our main part in our association, try to be in like um, holistically environmental friendly company, meaning, of course, also to look at the packaging topic. And we know that the word organic or bio or eco is not protected for packaging because it's only protected um, as the regulation says, meaning that you can have many very unorganic food products in the market with a very green packaging uh, look, I would say. So that's, of course, also a risk for organic processes, which is what, what we discussed in our um, association. So it's very hard for consumers, of course, to understand if organic or why maybe an organic uh, company wouldn't use these kind of packaging. Then. Um, as Sarah said, I think many, um, yeah, many consumers don't really understand the topic yet because it's too complex. So that's the main challenge we face in explaining the, the yeah, the bioplastics. <laughs> Thank you, Johanna. We have two minutes left and I would still like to give the floor to Sarah because uh, she also uh, wanted to comment on the on the presentations and the topic. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll try and keep it brief. It's not my uh, habit. Um, but yeah, so kind of linked to both of those questions. Um, I think regulation does have a role to play in um, the reason that you have to have um, organic products packaged is to prevent contamination or um, or fraud, so for um, substitution of organic and non-organic. But there's different ways that you can do that. So we need to the regulation needs to be flexible enough so that it doesn't uh, um, inadvertently drive an increase in plastic packaging because it's totally, as has already been said, it's totally counterintuitive that you would have organic products that are heavily packaged. So yeah, right, we do, and that's one of the things that we do in the interest group on organic processing is really try to understand this topic from the perspective of different men member states interpretation of the regulation and to try and find the best solution that works for all. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Sarah. And uh, I will take the last minute. So uh, thank you all once again. 
uh, Sarah, Valentina, Steve, Johanna, for your uh, very interesting uh, input. And uh, I think there is a lot of uh, uh, food for thought, uh, even if it's a virtual food for thought, uh, unpackaged and uh, very transparent. Uh, so I, I wish you all the very best for your food future endeavors in uh, in continuing uh, your a quest uh, with uh, sustainable packaging and I encourage everybody to uh, who is uh, taking part in person in Warsaw to use the 10 minutes break which is coming up for further discussion and uh, then afterwards at 12 the next session will be an update on the pro-org project which is also about uh, organic food processing a step before packaging nevertheless at least as much important so thank you everybody and have a very nice day also in bristol where sarah was talking from so thank thanks bye. bye 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 thank you bye